So I've got this terrible habit of adoring games that have spatial puzzles in them. And the reason that's a terrible habit is because of how horrible at those games I am. Which leads me to the game I'm talking about today, Cristallo. So you go head to head with these puzzles and you oftentimes come up short. At least for me, more often than not. And sure, it's just a game, but it's just another way in which you're faced with your inevitable failure. It's a downward spiral, an introspective glance at what could have been, but what isn't. Should I have been a better father? What could I have done? What can I do for my family that I, that I can't, that I'm incapable of doing because because of my inability to solve these sort of things. And that's what makes it so fun. Cristallo is a single player game of cards, dragons, gems, and loot, but mostly puzzles. The game is broken into two parts. A dragon has trapped a bunch of mythical creatures and a web browser. It's up to you to free them by removing all three orbs from each of their cards. At the start of the game, you shuffle the deck and set nine cards aside. Then, a card is flipped from the top of the deck and placed on the table. The play continues in this way, with each new card having to be placed with a crystal from the previous card adjacent to a crystal on the card being played. If a player can make a match consisting of three crystals and an orb in a 2x2 two two grid, they can remove a matching crystal from one of the creature cards and place it onto the grid. In order to make a match, the three crystals must be either completely identical consist of three different sizes of crystals but have all the same color. It be the same size but with three different colors. Or be completely different from one another. Play continues until either you run out of cards or you've removed all orbs from the creature. If you manage to free all the creatures, you then face the dragon. Add any leftover cards from the deck to the nine you set aside earlier. And flip them face up making sure that you have at least one of each type of orb. Clear the playing area and place the dragon within reach. You then use the cards you've set aside to play a shorter round in which you must capture one of each color orb in order to trap the dragon. Special cards can be obtained throughout the course of the game as well to increase your score and aid you in your quest. Cristallo is one of my favorite games that I've played this year and that's partially purely for the... I guess the decadence of it, maybe? It's small, it's delicious, it's appetizing to look at. Everything about it is... Oh, it's kind of making me hungry. Right, but it's decadent in a way that isn't complicated. You can pick it up and you can digest it and you can, you can play this game without having to worry about a whole lot of little rules, but still giving your brain the mental workout that you want from a puzzly game. First and foremost, let's go over the cons because I've only got two of them. And honestly, these are going to be very subjective. The first of which is that the game is difficult for me. To prepare for this review, I played the game 23 times, and that wasn't my intention to play that many times, but I felt like I couldn't accurately review it, or I didn't want to review it, until I had actually beat the game entirely. And that didn't happen for quite some time. I am not an indicator of how difficult this game is, because I know other reviewers have beat it, and I spoke to the designer and she beats it quite frequently, which is obvious because she's more familiar with it. But the point is, it can be a little bit difficult, which can be a little bit frustrating if you play a lot. The second con is that you are subject to the card draws, and that's sort of the nature of this game. You take what you get and you make decisions based on the information that you have, and you have to build this grid of cards. And if you play the wrong one and you don't pull the right kind of cards, you could be in trouble, and that could dictate the course of the game but not to a great extent, and the game itself is fairly short, but I'll get into that in a minute because we're going right into the pros of this game. Cristal is one of those relaxing and all-encompassingly great solo game experiences. I enjoy playing Robinson Crusoe solo, I enjoy playing Dinosaur Island solo, but those games are a beast to set up. They're games that take a while to set up before you're actually playing, and oftentimes I don't want to take that kind of energy. If I'm playing a game by myself, I want something that's easy to take out and play. For that reason, I love games like Okie Dokie, Friday, Onirim, and a number of games that I can play on my phone as applications. Now, I mentioned that I played Cristallo 23 times. Oftentimes, those plays were consecutive, sometimes three in a row. Cristallo is the type of game that gives you the crunchy goodness that you want from an experience where you're sitting down trying to solve a puzzle without any of the superflowers, superflowers, superflowers? Without any of the extra fluff. It's really one of those words that you kind of read and then try to say and it just isn't there. Another pro for this game is the look, the aesthetic of the game and how the components play into that. 
It is a beautiful card game, but at its heart, it is just a card game. It has a few extra components. It's got those gems, right? Like those are the only real component that aren't really all that necessary for the gameplay. You could use other markers, you could use other cards, but the, the little touches that are given to this game in the gems, in the artwork, in the whole feel of the game, is what pushes it to be more than a card game in my book. You pull it out and you are engrossed into a world that has been designed with such craft and such care and such thought. And you're engrossed because not only is it beautiful art, but because the gameplay is, is interesting, it's puzzly, it's really, really confusing, and sometimes it's infuriating. Cristalo is phenomenal. Liberty Kiefer knocked it out of the park with her first foray into crowdfunding a board game because she designed this game that I really love the puzzly aspect to. And she created all the art in a game that I really love the way it looks. Now I understand, Cristalo is not going to be a game for everyone. There are people that know you don't like spatial aspect puzzles regardless of how nice it looks. You don't like solo games. You don't, you're not in this hobby to play games by yourself. So this may not interest you, and, and that very well may be the case. So I can gush and gush and gush all I want about this game, but understand that this might not be for you. If everything that I'm saying is just still a wall for you, I mean, maybe take a look at it, but you know what it is now. It's smart, it's beautiful, it's engrossing, and it's a game that I hope will succeed far beyond its Kickstarter campaign, a game that I hope becomes a staple in a number of game collections. Special cards can be obtained throughout the course of the game as well to... Special cards can be obtained throughout the... Special cards can be obtained throughout the course of the game as well to increase your score and aid you in your quest.